Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10. Sponsored by Magic City Ford, Freedom First Credit Union, and Shules Home. Welcome to week four of First and 10. It is that time of year. Homecoming for some on the doorstep of district play for others. The weather starts to feel crisp and the games start to feel even more important. Our own staff never met a game they didn't like. I mean, never met a single game they didn't like. Uh, they're against the odds sometimes. You know, you feel like John Wick. A $14 million bounty on your head. Every interested party in the city wants a piece of it. I'd say the odds are about even. Jeff Williamson's odds of a top-shelf website, a stone-cold favorite. WSLS.com first and 10 for all your high school football needs. Which brings me to our game of the week. Now, this one is what the gamblers would call a pickup. Nobody's favored. It's too close to call. Radford and Gretna, both quality playoff-bound teams, and they showed why tonight. Both squads 2-0, having met in the playoffs a year ago. Tonight, another instant classic. Eric, take it away. Hey, Appy, we know coming into this one that Radford would have the size advantage, and they really try to get aggressive with every team that they actually go against each and every week. As for Gretna, they have the speed advantage, so something had to give tonight. Let's show you the highlights and get on out to this one. Radford going to Rumble tonight, doing it without leading rusher P.J. Prelo and leading tackler Justice Marshall. Gretna striking first. Tabron Mavens hits Dalen Miller, 64-yard touchdown for the 7-0 lead. Radford responded, and we were tied at 7 at halftime. Second half, check out quarterback Zane Root shedding tackles and taking it all the way up the right sideline. 50 yards for the touchdown score. It's a 14-7 Radford advantage, but not so fast. Here comes Gretna. I like my burger with fries. This is Mr. Jordan Burger off to the races. 70 yards to the house. We're tied at 14. Hawks held the ball late with the chance to win it with the field goal. Mr. Custodio Canaris is going to line up and try to kick it here. It's just wide right. No good. We have overtime. Here's Gretna's Tabor Mabins hitting Cameron Mabins for the touchdown. Important to note the PAT, no good. So Radford responded quickly. Darius Wesley Brubeck goes in for his second touchdown of the night. Fans pumped up about this one. But here we go, the all-important extra point in overtime. It's the ace, Connor Litton. It's lit. He drills it. Radford gets the win 21-20. You can tell we're just going to line up and try to go right at them and use our offensive line and hang in there with our defensive line, and uh, we kind of did. I mean, I know some people want us to throw a little bit more and stuff, but they weren't giving us that. We thought we could run and got there, and uh, just kids gutted it out. I'm so proud of them. Knowing that, like, PJ's out, and he was, like, a big back in the game. I know I had to step up with a lot of pressure to help bring the game. It's interesting to note that both coaches said uh, earlier in the week that this one would come down to special teams and actually protecting the ball, and that's exactly what it came down to, a special teams play. Second year in a row that Rafford has won this matchup by just one point. Appy? All right, an instant classic to Giles now, and we chronicled earlier in the newscast there's a special focus tonight. We're happy to bring you the details ahead of tonight's county clash. Yes, they are Alexis Strong as they put it aside to rally behind Alexis Dawson, the freshman cheerleader at Narrows, recently diagnosed with cancer. Opening kickoff, Giles coughing it up, and Narrows would recover. Later on, Narrows looking to capitalize. Chase Blaker coming up. He's going to roll out and throw it to Matthew Morgan. Nice 19-yard game. Spartan defense held and held and held, but eventually, eventually it was the green wave. They go to 4-0. 20-8 was your final. Covington at James River tonight. And we're looking at homecoming. Congrats to James Patterson and Nikki Kirk. And here we go, Covington Cougars. It's Simon Gibson to Skylar Barnett all the way to the 11-yard line. Couple of plays later, Gibson to Sean Smith. And we know all about him. Uh, he'd roll in 14-0 uh, Cougars on top. Here he comes. And let's let him get in there. There you go. 21-0 Covington, your final. Meantime, Floyd County 13 to 6. George Wythe outscores Carroll County 65 to 35. Eastmont at Auburn tonight. Let's get a look at Carson East getting it going for Auburn. 
And he is in. Yeah, a bit of a sandwich there, but it's 7 0 Auburn, Coach Akers. And here we go Auburn punting. Watch right here. Eastmont, we've got a muff. Jacob Nestor, the catch. But you can't advance. You can't advance that. You're going to get the ball, though. And Nestor makes sure we know all about it. He's going to score this time. Show it to us, big fella. There you go. 44 0 Auburn is victorious. Mountain Empire scores. Galax over Rural tonight. Grayson by one, 15 14. Pendleton, West Virginia beats Bath County tonight, 43 to 6. If you want peace, prepare for war. The Hilltoppers have been ready for war since, oh, I don't know, August camp. Would it show up again tonight in the Black and Blue Bowl? The Mayor's Cup up for grabs in the Roanoke City Championship. That is always a war. And Northside brought the fight to Salem tonight. That game was much more than a skirmish, plus this. We're the William Burns Terriers, and you're watching First and Ten on WSLS 10. We're back, and I'm on record that EC Glass is one of my picks to make a whole lot of postseason noise this year. But there are no gimmies in the Seminole, including the black and blue bowl. That's right. The trophy's a medical box. you got to be kidding me. It's JF and EC Glass, and that's Ty Foster, and that's a touchdown, and it's 7-0 Glass. JF, some trickeration, if you will. Fake handoff, Hunnell Riddlebarger throwing it to Dontaeus Braxton. 70 yards, we've got a 7-7 game. But hold on, Glass up 14-7. It's Quaterius Craighead, and there he is. He's in the zone, 21-7 Glass. On their way to a 59-21 win as we leave. That's Drayshawn Kendrick going 75 yards for six. Brookful at LCA. LCA up 7-0. And, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful evening for football, right? Ryan North ground and pound. One-yard touchdown. 7-7 seven, seven game. LCA looking for the go-ahead field goal. It's up, but it's no good. 7-7 seven, seven at the half. LCA's Logan Nelson would get it going here. Tyler Rose, 34-yard connection, would lead to a touchdown. LCA, 14-7, your final. Meantime, Rustburg falls by a single point to the Lancers tonight. Heritage all over Liberty, 68-14. Now to the Roanoke City Championship. Both of these teams shown flashes of being dangerous. Both have hit speed bumps. Brooke PH got stung week one, if you recall. William Fleming stung big time last week. So I'm guessing the Colonels with the tougher task of trying to bounce back after that. Right, and they want a little revenge. So they've only won once in the last five years of meeting up. So you could say, yeah, they definitely want to beat PH, but they're going against a team who is stout in their defense. And of course, no friendship is safe in this crosstown battle. First quarter, I'm calling it now. This is the light of the night. Saquon Bannister with the one-handed interception. Pretty good statement for Fleming in the beginning of the game, who a few possessions later, they get down in the red zone. That's Daquan Nichols, and he punches it in, but the Colonels up 7-0. Then Patriots fire back into the first, hand off to Jalen Cook, and he ties it all up 7-7. Jump to the fourth quarter. Jamron Jones says, see ya, straight to the house. He helps put it away along with the stout Patriot defense as Patrick Henry adds another year with the Mayor's Cup, beating Fleming 28-21. to They just keep battling. They're getting better every week, and, uh, you know, we've got a pretty good defensive team this year, and they, they, they do a lot of good things. And uh, I thought uh, Tyshawn Webb had a really nice game over there at corner. They, you know, they came at him a little bit, and he shut him down. You know. They played hard. It was a good game. You know, they played hard. And uh, good hot. So Patrick Henry will return home next week to take on William Burton and Fleming. We'll have a bye. Back to you, Abby. Outstanding, good, emotional game. Meantime, I had an inkling after the Vikings retooled the offense that they might become a tough out. Moving forward, here we go with Salem in. And it's Northside, and it's Salem, and it's a gorgeous night. And Salem getting it going right here. Sean Collins returning a punt. We'll speed it up for you because he gets near the goal line. And then Cameron Leftwich doing what Salem does, plowing behind those big mules up front. That's a touchdown. Salem in command. But hold on. Northside's got some guns, and they got them rolling. Sidney Webb darting it to Isaac Earls. That was ruled a touchdown, made the catch, came down with it. Ball popped out. That is a touchdown, Northside. A little bit later on, Sidney Webb 
just a freshman, keeping it down the sideline 47 yards later. The Vikings led in this. Salem had to work their way back for the 21-14 victory. Stanton River at Blacksburg tonight. Blacksburg leading big at halftime. Pick it up second half. Luke Goforth scrambling, finding daylight. Big gain here to put the Bruins back in business. A few plays later, another Luke. Luke Elliott punching it in. Blacksburg up 49-0 on their way to a 49-14 victory over Stanton River. Allegheny at Cave Spring tonight. Bogle Field Mountaineers down to start the second. Brian Broman, sideline scamper right there. Next play, Travis Fridley. We've got a full bowl on the play. Recovery in the end zone, two-point conversion. Good. We've got a tie. Later in the third, Brian Broman's going to keep it himself. He's going uh, up the sideline. A second unanswered score to put Allegheny over Cave Spring. Two-point, no good. Knight's going to answer right here. Lucas Duncan to Daniel Reeves. Cave Spring, 27-20. It was a ball game tonight at Bogle. The River Ridge littered with teams that I would describe as enigmas wrapped in a riddle. That's to say, Pulaski County is undefeated, but still a bit of a mystery. Cougars at the William Byrd Terriers tonight. End of the first scoreless. Pulaski's Asani McLeod going to J.J. Johnson for the pick right there. Start of the second. Handoff. Josh Moore. He's going up the middle for six. Bird with the lead. Keep in mind, Pulaski 3-0. and oh. Next bird drive. Logan Baker connecting to Hunter Harris. We've got a loose ball, a fumble. Pulaski's Luke Russell is on it. Cougars couldn't capitalize. It would be late until they would. 19-14, Pulaski remains undefeated, but certainly not untested tonight. Christiansburg at Rockbridge tonight. Christiansburg is 3-0. Rockbridge oh so dangerous with that air attack of Coach Postens. Here we go. Miller J to Luke Mayer from his own 33-yard line to the 23. Wildcats, it's Miller J, Xavier Schaefer, two-yard touchdown, 7-0. More Wildcats. Miller J to Jalik Lynch. Oh, great effort right there to the 32-yard line. A few plays later, Miller J to who else? Jaleek Lynch. That is a 20-yard touchdown coming. Here it comes. And there you have it, 41-19, Rockbridge victorious. VES over Greenbrier Christian tonight, 14-10. North, uh, North Cross and Rono Catholic will go at it tomorrow, Saturday at 2 p.m., ought to be a great one. Consider your origins. You are not made to live as brutes, but rather to follow virtue and knowledge. In Magna Vista tonight, we learn if the Warriors or the Eagles are on the right path. When we come back, Three and O William Campbell at three and O Lord Botetourt homecoming in Daleville. James Ryan Salvi to Kyle Arnold, uh, red zone catch and run, seven yard touchdown, seven O LB. More Lord Botetourt behind the big O line. It is Dylan Wade bursting through. Yeah, just follow the big fellas, and you're into the zone. It's fourteen nothing, and then watch right here. Salvi's going to go up top to Arnholt again and watch all the pump fake and then the second move and then the grab and then he shakes the defender. LB 48 to nothing with a homecoming win this evening. All right, Eric's back. And after watching Magna Vista last week, mm -hmm. it would be hard to picture them not getting the best of it. But Franklin County, they're the real deal. They certainly are. But we know Magna Vista, they got back to that blue funk like they wanted they to. But We'll see if they did it again tonight. In the hole, hosting Franklin County, and the Eagles got it going early. J. Rod Smith running back the opening kick for the touchdown, the hook and book. 7 0 Eagles lead. Magna Vista coming right back at you. Lewis Taylor rumbling and bumbling deep into the Eagles territory. That would lead to a touchdown. 7 0. Seven is your score. Franklin County, County coming right back. J. Ron Smith Ooh. again, this time bursting through, getting all the way down into good territory, leading to a 13-7 lead. Franklin County pulling off the 40-26 to win tonight. How about Dan River at Bassett homecoming? 
going on tonight. Good to be King. Dan River opening up the second half. Kickoff run back by Jordan Price. The price is right. Yes, it is. 13 to 7 lead. Number three, Keyshawn Valentine running the kickoff back. This is going to set up a score from Mr. Kevon Smith. 15 to 13 is your lead. And Bassett goes on to the 28 to 19 victory. Piedmont scores for you. Halifax all over Parkview tonight, 34-14. Martinsville falls to Chatham, 35-21. Other scores, Nelson County, 51-7 in their victory. Patrick County over North Stokes, 28-14. Happy. It was a fine show indeed. Week 5 returns with a special college football section. The Hokies in Duke next Friday night and a UVA-Notre Dame preview from South Bend. Until then, we'll see you next week.